Happy Monday. It's my first work day in December, which is weird because it's already the fourth, but it was just kind of like how things fell this year, I guess. Typically after November, um, which is a writing challenge month for me, I take the next day off. So I always take off December 1st. Um, and this year that just happened to be a Friday. So I took off Friday and then of course was the weekend. And so now I'm back. Um, and after November, the first thing I do on the, um, my first work day, sorry, my brain is slow today, (laughs) uh, is some planning. So it's a planning day for me. I, um, spent most of this morning going through emails. I had normally, so the way I like to do my emails, I like to keep my inbox reasonably clean. So I kind of like it, use it like a to-do list. Um, so it's like, oh, I'm keeping this email here because I have a thing to do. I have to download a thing. I have to respond to a person. I have to sign a contract. I have to pay this person. Right. Um, but in November I tend to get a little bit lax about cleaning it out. And so I had over 80 emails in my inbox. So I got them down. I got it down to 30, which is pretty good. Um, and most of them will be pretty quick to deal with. I just kind of have to, I have to go back and actually do stuff. <laughs> so, uh, that's, that was fun. Um, and then I started my December planning. So I am a to-do list type person. So I keep a notebook. Um, and the way that I operate is annually. So at the beginning of every year, I sit down and I look at like, what did I accomplish this year and what do I want to accomplish next year? Um, and then I make a a list of things that I want to get done. And then each month I create a task list. And then every day I can sit down and look at my task list and say, what do I feel like working on today? Um, and sometimes it's writing, sometimes it's editing, sometimes it's doing publishing stuff. Sometimes it's like marketing. Um, Sometimes it's client work or responding to emails or whatever. Um, And so then I focus on that and I slowly cross things off my list. If I don't finish a list in a month, then I move all of the remaining items into the next month. Um, So November, I didn't, I almost never finish my list in November because my focus is like exclusively on producing as many words as I can. Um, And then if I finish the list, then I pull items from the next month. So I don't plan out my whole year in advance. It's not my work. I usually do two months at a time. Um, And then I can move back and forth. So in January, my January list and my February list. And then as I move through January, I might put things on the February list. And then if I finish January, then I pull things from the February list into January. Um, If I don't finish my January list, then I push them into February. And then February starts. I start my March list, um, and then I, you know, I kind of move through the year like that. So, um, it's interesting, uh, because I started doing this after, um, I really started like doubling down on the idea that my writing is a business, right? So I make money every month. I, on book sales, I make money, um, doing workshops and teaching, I make money doing client work. So writing for other people or editing for other people. Um, And when I really was like, you know what, this is a business. I need to start paying attention and and really tracking these things. What I started to realize was that it was really hard to balance client work with my own projects. Um, And so kind of having this list helps, you know, I know how much client work I can do in a month now. um, And how much of my own work I can do in a month. If I don't have any client work, then I do more of my own work. If I have a lot of client work, then I push my own stuff forward, you know? And so I, I kind of keep this sort of moving balance, um, as I go through the year. So it's helpful. Um, and I started, uh, keeping it handwritten on notebooks. I I don't know. I just like the tactile feel and it gives me kind of a constant reminder, like, okay, there's things that I need to do in that book over there. <laughs> um, a couple of years ago, uh, sorry, I have my computer on my lap, but a couple of years ago I had this like revelation, which is the dumbest thing, right? Like some of these little teeny tiny revelations 
make a huge difference, but they just feel dumb. Um, but it was tabs. And I know it looks like there's a lot, but every single one I put in there intentionally and I know what it is and I know what it means. And so when I'm looking for something, all I have to do is go to the specific tab and say like, oh, okay, you know, this is my January to-do list and here it is. And so um, that's been like extremely helpful. Also stickers have been really helpful. So I give myself stickers when I accomplish things. So you can see here's some of my stickers. I put them on pages like throughout my notebook just for fun. Um, and I don't know, it's dumb. Like it feels dumb here. So these pages are nothing but stickers, but these are writing days. So this one, and I think I have another one. I, think I did three, yeah. You can see. I did writing sprints. This was a marathon day. Um, and my only goal was to do as many sprints as possible. So every time I completed a sprint, I got a sticker. Uh, a sprint is like, a, it's kind of like, Pomodoro technique if you're familiar with that but it's basically you set a timer and you like commit to focusing for the period of time that you've set the timer for and sometimes that works for me and sometimes it doesn't um so for the longer sprints I gave myself two stickers and for the shorter ones so I made this like weird dance scene with stickers and then this is is it was supposed to be like a sci-fi sort of world <laughs> with like weird plants and uh you know flying jellyfish bug um and then what are these called <laughs> hot air balloons um and then this was supposed to be sort of an underwater scene with jellyfish and and other fish and um coral and stuff so um i collect stickers from lots of different places right now i've been working my way through this book the antiquarian sticker book and it's super cool you can see the pages i've been um but it's just kind of these like really weird stickers from like old illustrations that uh and it just like has kind of like a cool fun vibe and so I was just like flip through and like pick fun stickers that I want to use. I have a lot of space stickers. Um Five Below has cheap stickers, so I got cats in space. Um so I use a combination of this notebook and stickers. Um and I have a new notebook every year, so this one, actually, I didn't fill this year, which I did last year, but I kind of half started in on a new notebook partway through the year for some, um, like, story ideas. I put everything in this notebook. It's not just task lists. So this is, like, you can see, like, town locations for the fantasy series that I'm working on. Um, this is a timeline um, that kind of goes across all the different books. Or, like, what's this? Um, this is like when I do book bub research, uh, to run ads, I'll just like write it down. Um, this is a sort of explanation of different types of friendships. If you're familiar with the Clifton strengths, I'm a relator. That's the only relationship strength I have. And so I was like drawing ex explanation of like how I perceive friendships so that's me in the middle these are my relator friends these are potential relator friends these are friendly acquaintances and then I've got service providers neighbors internet friends family and I sort of like th these are this is sort of like how I categorize relationships um and so that's sort of how I was thinking because I've met other people who are just like the best friends with everybody they've ever met um and that's just not how it works for me. Like it takes me a while to like get to know somebody and to build a relationship. And most people just stay in sort of this external category. And if they disappeared from my life, I might notice, but it wouldn't like be significant. Like it wouldn't be like a huge impact for me. Whereas another person, if I disappear from their life, they, if they perceive me as being closer to them than I perceive. Anyway, <laughs> it's complicated. Um, so yeah, I like literally will put anything I'm thinking about in this. I'll take notes from like workshops. Obviously I have my little sticker pages. This, this is fun. Yeah. Baby Yoda. How can you go wrong with that? Um, 
So usually I fill it up all the way, but I kind of half cheated this year. So, oh look, notes from a phone call with my doctor's office. Notes from clients. I can't show you that because that's confidential. Uh oh yeah, this was fun. Where does the rest of it? <laughs> oh, I just skipped a page. I wrote down a list of rhetorical devices. Um, and I never did I never followed through on this. Maybe I'll do it next year. But my idea was that like every day or every month or something, I was gonna focus on one and try to find a way to implement it in my work. So sentential adverbs, um, a syndeton. I don't even know how to pronounce half of these. I understand what most of them are. Polysyndeton, understatement, understatement's a fun one. Litotes, parallelism, chiasmus, zygmas are fun. Uh, antithesis, anaphora, epistrophe, anadiplosis, um, hypophora, rhetorical questions, metabasis, um, amplification. I don't know this. Yeah, diacope is on here. I definitely used that one. Personification, hyperbole, illusion, eponyms, oxymorons, epithets. Uh, so I have like a whole list of those. Uh, so anyway, my point is I'm doing planning today and organization and stuff um, to kind of try to catch up and figure out where I am after having done November. Now, I probably should mention November was National Novel Writing Month. It's a little controversial this year because there were some accusations of inappropriate behavior by some of the moderators in the forums. And so I've been calling it a writing challenge month. I am, uh, a lot of people like jumped on the bandwagon and like deleted their nano accounts and all the stuff. Um, I'm guessing the nonprofit lost a lot of money. I'm not really a bandwagon type of person. So um, I'm waiting. Um, I I want to hear the um, board has sent out a couple emails explaining the process that they're going through and trying to be transparent about like, hey, like we're trying to deal with this, like it's complicated. And having been on a board before, I know how complicated it can be to try to like deal with issues. So I want to give them time um, and I want to see how they're going to respond, deal with and manage the situation. Um, and I, I can't, Nano has been like super important in my life since the beginning. It's sort of what got me into writing um, in bulk. Um, and so I don't want to just kind of cut it off unless there is evidence and proof that there has been, you know, wrongdoing on part of the organization. Um, so I, I'm waiting to kind of see what the outcome is. And in the meantime, I'm just calling all of my nano months and projects writing challenges. So I did my November writing challenge, which was to write 50,000. I wrote, I think I got up to like 56. I didn't actually do the math, but I think I got up to 56,000. I didn't finish my manuscript, but that's all right. The whole total thing is oh, well over 60,000 because I started with some words. Um, and uh, in the meantime, to try to like motivate me and the people in my Discord server, um, we've been setting up um, writing challenges of other sorts. So like writing bingos um, and we have some writing image prompts. And um, actually, it's been kind of fun to like brainstorm other ways to sort of motivate you, me, people um, to do writing and to keep moving forward on the projects. So anyway, that's probably enough for me today. I am a little bit rambly. My brain is a little bit fuzzy. My hands are stiff and sore today. So, um, yep. <laughs> That's my vlog for today. Happy Monday. I hope you have a productive day or a restful day or whatever kind of day you need. Um, and, you know, stay tuned for more.